Crime Stories with Nancy Grace. She's brilliant. She's beautiful. She's a mom. Beautiful home. The works. She goes missing. In the last hours, we learn about a bombshell statement from the husband of missing mom, Suzanne Morphew. But what, if anything, does it mean? I'm Nancy Grace. This is Crime Stories. Thank you for being with us here at Fox Nation and Sirius XM 111. We all recall when this mom, just precious, she's about that big, goes out biking, or so we're told, on Mother's Day. Now, you know what? If my husband did not give me a card or something, just bring me a cup of hot tea anything that would actually hurt my feelings but hey that's just me anyway according to sources she's out all by herself while her husband is out of town her daughter's on a camping trip when they try to call her she doesn't answer that's not like mom so let's take it from the top before we get to the new bombshell take a listen to this our friends at cbs4 and she went biking on Sunday uh, there in the mountains, about 20 miles west of Salida, Trevor. And, and then there was nothing from her. Tell us what you do know. Alan, I'm, I'm willing to uh, confirm that the bike was found on Sunday evening. The bike was found on Sunday evening, the night that she disappeared. Um, and for more information on the bike or its condition, mm-hmm. I would encourage you and everyone else to contact the Chapey County Sheriff's Department. Yeah, it, it has to be disconcerting to know the bike is found. The sheriff has said he does not believe that this was an animal. And so all of Coloradans really ought to be aware that there is a potential then, Trevor, that she might be somewhere well out of the county for all, all we know, which is why we need to make sure that we're aware of the situation. Okay, let me introduce my panel, because the first person I want to go to is Cheryl McCollum, director of the Cold Case Research Institute and crime scene expert. In fact, we had to call her in from a crime scene to join us today. Cheryl McCollum, I don't get it. I'm not knocking the nephew, since he's the only one really speaking out, her nephew. But I find that really odd that he says, uh, uh, I'm willing to confirm her bike was found. What? Why so close to the vest? Why are we playing hide and seek with the evidence? Give me some evidence so I can help in the search. What's the deal? Absolutely. And Nancy, here's the thing. They keep mentioning animals. Most people that live in a mountainous area like Colorado or near deserts or anything where animals may attack a human being, they know that that carcass, for lack of a better word, is not going to be drugged more than 50 feet. So if this had been an animal attack, she would have been near that bicycle. And that must be why the sheriff was saying at the get-go, I don't think this is an animal attack. In the last hours, a bombshell occurrence, a bombshell statement from the husband. But let me introduce my guest attorney joining me out of L.A., Dr. Daniel Bober, forensic psychiatrist, chief psychiatry, Memorial Regional Health Care, and professor at Yale University School of Medicine. You can find him on Insta at Dr. Daniel Bober. Cheryl McCollum, as you know well, Lauren Scharf joining me there on the scene, Fox 21, Colorado Springs. She spoke with the husband, Barry Morphew, this week. Dan Ribikoff. And you'll see why we need Dan Ribikoff, polygraph expert and author of I Spy, How to Be Your Own Investigator. I love this book, I Spy. I just hope my children don't get a hold of it. At uh, www.danribikoff.com and Tyson Draper from the Draper Brothers YouTube channel who secretly recorded Barry Morphew at the location where Suzanne's more bike was reportedly found. I've got a lot of questions about how the bike got there and whether the scene was staged. But, you know, when you're trying to put a case together, you start at the beginning. You try to analyze clues that may have been left behind. Take a listen to our friends at CBS4. The hardest thing, she's a beloved member of our family and 
uh, the sweetest person that you've ever met. The nephew of 49-year-old Suzanne Morphew talking about what it's like to go through the difficulty of a search that started after she went missing during a Sunday bike ride. Family has said her husband Barry was out of town in Denver. A friend called authorities when Morphew didn't return. The bike was found on Sunday, the day that she went missing. The sheriff has not yet shared information on the bike, but has told CBS for the reason for her disappearance is probably not animals. Extensive searching in Chafee County, about 20 miles west of Salida, has not brought an answer on what happened to Morphew. Extensive searching that goes back to what Cheryl McCollum was saying earlier that an animal carcass likely would not be dragged over 50 feet if bobcats or mountain lions got it, much less Susan Suzanne Morphew. But I want to go to you, Troy Slayton, criminal defense attorney. You know, you know your way around the courtroom. Can you just help me out? Why is it the nephew who's speaking out? Where's the husband? Well, if the husband was my client, Nancy, I would tell him not to speak out. Why would he need a criminal defense attorney telling him don't talk? His wife is missing. He says a mountain lion ate her. And I guess he ate her right down to her toenail polish because there's not a trace anywhere of that happening. He provided that as a plausible, factual scenario, Nancy. But he knows that based on lots of similar cases like this, the first person, the most likely person that they're going to be looking at is him. So what so? he did, he What's wrong with that? 30, he gave 30 hours of testimony to the FBI and the CBI and answered all their questions. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. you know what, Dr. Daniel Biber, you know what? If my husband went missing, and yes, we got, you know, we never fought one time before the children were born. Now we're locked in Mortal Kombat at all times about the school, (laughs) the scouts, the bedtime, the this, the that, the vegetarian, the, the junk food. It's whatever. If he something happened to him and he went missing, I would be screaming to the mountaintops. If somebody wanted to investigate me, I would say, bring it on. But find David. You know, grill me, saute me, cut me up on, a, on, on the griddle, but find my husband. And I am not getting that. And you know what? I've held back on more for you. But I, I don't understand it. So you explain it to me, Bober. Well, I think uh, what your guest said before, which is true that, you know, in this situation, the husband's always going to be the first person they're going to look at. So I think it's a delicate balance. Okay, I, I, I don't see the delicate balance you're talking about, because if it were my husband, I mean, sure, I'm a call if it were your husband, you'd put up a blockade, you know, at the police department, at, you'd be laid on the courthouse steps. No stone would go unturned. They could have my DNA. They could give me a polygraph. They could do whatever they wanted to get off of me so that they could start focusing on what truly happened to Walt if he were missing. I would hide nothing. Take a listen to our friends at KWGN. Day three of the search for 49-year-old Suzanne Morphew, the Chafee County wife and mother, first reported missing late Sunday afternoon. The search intensifying today along Highway 50 at the base of Monarch Pass. Today I've got different types of searching dogs in the area, um, going back over the same area again. Sunday afternoon, Morphew had set out for a bike ride along County Road 225 and West Highway 50. Chafee County's sheriff says social media is actually getting to places where search crews cannot. Well over about 180,000, well over 180,000 people on Facebook. Authorities down south hope day four ends with promising news. We brought on a lot of extra help to work on this case and we're just looking for anything we can to try to find her. Now I did ask Mr. Morphew if he's interested in making a public plea. He says at this point it's simply too soon. Too soon for what? How much time do you want to pass before you make a plea? Let me pause and thank our partner making today's program possible. It's Kansas City Steaks. I've got to tell you, David and the twins grilled out over the weekend and it was delicious. There's nothing like the sizzle of a steak on a hot grill on a summer night. And you can make this summer's grilling season one none of you will ever forget with world-famous Kansas City steaks. Filet mignon, strip steaks, ribeyes, all delivered right to your door. They even have pork, chicken, seafood, sides, and desserts too. Big, bold, full of mouth-watering flavor. Get that steakhouse quality you love in the comfort of your backyard. Find your perfect combo today 
at KansasCitySteaks.com. And right now, they're offering an amazing offer. Go to KansasCitySteaks.com, use promo code NANCY at the checkout, get 10 free steak burgers and free shipping on orders of $75 or more. You can also call 1-800-987-8325. Mention code NANCY to get the special offer. KansasCitySteaks.com. Enter code NANCY at checkout or call 1-800-987-8325. Mention code NANCY. KansasCitySteaks.com. Thanks. The following is a true story. I had a lady that was in her mid-70s, and I'd sold her timeshare, and that was the lowest I'd ever felt in my life. I knew then that I had to do something to simply not to go to hell for selling timeshare. Chuck McDowell founded Wesley Financial Group to help folks cancel their timeshares permanently. I called her and everybody that I'd sold timeshare to, and I said, this is what I said to you that was a lie, and this is what you need to do to cancel your timeshare. From that point, people started referring friends to me to help them cancel the timeshare, and that's how it all started. I fought the world's largest timeshare company in federal court. If I had lost that lawsuit, there would be no one helping people that have been lied to when they bought timeshare. If we take you as a client, we will cancel your timeshare or we'll give your money back. That's what makes us different. Call Wesley Financial Group now for a free information kit. 800-881-4300. That's 800-881-4300. 800 881 4300. Crime Stories with Nancy Grace. Guys, we are talking about a missing mom, Suzanne Morphew. Seemingly everything went quiet, but we have not forgotten about Suzanne Morphew. And in the last hours, a bombshell straight out to our friend Lauren Shar Fox 21 Colorado Springs news reporter you spoke to Barry Morphew this week what did you learn you know he told me that there's not one ounce of evidence against him and that, okay, wait, you know, wait 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 was- wait Lauren you got to understand you're on the scene you're getting the information fast and furious but i have to analyze what you're telling me so the first gist to me. the first gist of what he had to say is there's no evidence against me you can't prove it what about where is my wife? I wake up in the morning. The She's not there. We don't have our hot yeah. tea together. I mean, I, I'm, in, of, I'm in living hell. Well, what about that? Yeah. Was there any of that? Oh, absolutely, Nancy. He got emotional with me. He talked about how he misses her every single day and that, you know, um, the two daughters are missing him uh, or missing her so much as well. You know, they've been married for 26 years. He talked about how, you know, she's a godly and uh, loving woman, mother to his two children. He spoke, he said he couldn't sleep and eat. Um, You know, he's sick without his wife, his best friend, his lover, he says. And he, you know, he's just devastated. He, He did talk a lot about how, you know, he is missing his wife a lot. Let me ask you something, and I'm sure that this is going to make Troy slate and pull his hair out. But you said he was emotional. Did he cry? He did not. Did his voice shake? Yes. His voice shook. Did it crack? Um, he, he, he stopped himself before I think he might have started crying. To polygraph expert Dan Ribikoff at danribikoff.com. I know defense attorneys like Troy Slayton will try to slice me up like a Thanksgiving turkey, but demeanor matters to me. It matters to me. Just recently, uh, a, a fellow prosecutor passed away, and when I spoke to his wife, the first thing she said on the phone was, well, you know anybody that wants to buy a lake house? I didn't like that. Now, that means absolutely nothing because he passed away of natural causes, and that's a fact. But that just rubbed me the wrong way. Uh, What demeanor would you expect, Dan Ribikoff? Well, certainly unusual affect uh, can be a sign of deception. Uh, When someone who's near and dear uh, disappears, obviously you're uh, suffering trauma. But uh, this has been uh, going on for a while now, so the emotions uh, should start to show. 
uh, should be crying, uh, should be shaking, should have that uh, tremble in the voice. Um, so certainly an unusual affect is something that would raise my eyebrows as to uh, not being uh, kosher, as we would say in the investigative business. Take a listen to our guest, Lauren Scharf at Fox 21. Speaking of polygraph, listen. For the first time, responding to allegations made by Suzanne's side of the family that he refused polygraphs, saying, I've never been asked to do a polygraph. There is nothing that I'm hiding. I have given three 30 hours of testimony to the FBI and the CBI. I've answered every question, every single question. Private investigator Dan Corsentino, who's worked in law enforcement for 25 years and was a former Pueblo County Sheriff and Fountain Police Chief, says even if a person is asked to submit to a polygraph, it could be reasonable for that person to refuse. A investigator may offer a polygraph only to have the subject or the person of interest refuse it based on legal advice, knowing the polygraph is not admissible in a courtroom. Courtroom, schmort room, who cares? We're trying to find his wife. Now, he says he offered to take a polygraph. Well, why hasn't that happened? Take a listen to more of our friend Lauren Scharf. They want to stay anonymous, but say they're worried Suzanne's husband, Barry, is tampering with the investigation. This family member says Barry refused two polygraph tests and a critical analysis test. The family member also says data collected from Barry's truck doesn't match up with the information he gave investigators. As of Monday night, no clarification was offered on any of that information by the Chafee County Sheriff's Office. Okay, to you, Lauren Sharp, joining me, Fox 21, Colorado Springs. What evidence in the truck does not add up to evidence we've heard about? Well, Barry didn't talk about the truck specifically. He spoke about a Bobcat, a machine that he has. But he didn't say exactly what was wrong with his timeline. He just said something, the timing was off with the Bobcat. But in your report, you said that data collected from Morpheus' truck does not match the story he gave investigators. Are you referring to his trip to Denver on Mother's Day? I, I, I asked CBI to answer that question, and they wouldn't tell me. And that's information from uh, Suzanne Morphew's family that told me that the that data from his, truck. Barry mm-hmm. Morphew's truck, does not jive with his story. Is that, is that correct? That's what the family's saying. Yes. Okay. Let yes, me go yes, to Tyson yes. Draper joining, my, joining us, the Draper Brothers YouTube channel, who secretly recorded Barry Morphew at the location where Suzanne's bike was found. Welcome, Tyson. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for having me on, Nancy. It's a pleasure to be here. Tyson, yes. what happened? Well, you know, I, I, I'm listening to Lauren talk, and, and you guys have this conversation, and, uh, you know, I couldn't help but think of my interview with Barry. It was so candid, you know, and it, it's such a it's such a different interview because, you know, it's not – Lauren Sharp with Fox 21, you know, it gives him a chance to get on there and cry and, and talk about all the things he's doing and not doing. But in my video, he didn't know he was being recorded, which is, which is very valuable because we can see a real glimpse into his character and and into where his emotions and, and his mind is at. And during that interview, I think it's, it's, it's real. And he said, he said in there, he talked about how maybe a cat drug her up the hill. And he said it with zero emotion. Okay, and, wait, right there, Tyson. Mm-hmm. I thought you were going to tell me how wrong I was. And in my mind, I was thinking, you know what? Thank God. <laughs> I'm wrong. I'm wrong. Okay, because I've kind of held back on the husband. Because I didn't have enough information to make any type of assessment. But I was concerned he wasn't coming forward. I didn't see him out there searching. He wouldn't speak to the camera. I never have gotten a full explanation of this so-called class he went to on Mother's Day Sunday in Denver and why he had to spend the night there. I I don't get that. My husband just drove three and a half hours one way to a series of business trips, and I missed him. But he came back. 
I kept dragging and dragging, dragging for us to eat supper, hoping he'd come back. And just as I was fixing the plates, I heard the door open. So why did he have to spend the night? Nobody can confirm to me where he was and if it's real. But I'll circle back to that. Guys, we have some sound from Tyson Draper's The Draper Brothers YouTube channel. Let me show you what happened. Um, and I do have a reward. There is a reward, $210,000 reward. Whoa. Um, the bike was found at the bottom of the hill by that tree where the peak is. Oh, really? Um, the first night there was a mountain lion. The officer seen it walk by the car. So we thought maybe she got coming down this hill, a car coming around the corner fast. Maybe it was disoriented and got in the river. We've covered it. All of this really good, this triangle with search and rescue. So we're pretty comfortable that she's not in this triangle between the RV park, your truck, this road, and then the next road. Okay, you are actually hearing Barry Morphew speak, apparently, candidly, according to Tyson Draper of the Draper Brothers on YouTube, he didn't know that he was being recorded. Let me pause and thank our partner making today's program possible. It's Blinds Galore. I'm thrilled to tell you today about Blinds Galore. When we moved, I spent a lot of time finding the right fixtures for our home. It was our chance to address all the little details of our home. Nothing was more important than the right window treatments, draperies, and blinds for our windows, and it took a while to find the right ones. But lucky for all of us, our partners at BlindsGalore.com have found a better way to shop for blinds and window treatments, and you can do it all from home. Just take your measurements and customize online. Our superstar producer, Jackie, ordered her new blinds from Blinds Galore, and they're gorgeous. Blinds Galore gets you a designer look without a designer price tag. And you can even use their new Build-A-Blind tool to see exactly what they'll look like right on screen before you buy them. Blind shade, shutters, drapery, Blinds Galore has it all. And these window treatments are not lying around on a shelf somewhere gathering dust. All of BlindsGalore.com's products are hand-built from scratch, delivered right to your door, and created just for your windows. BlindsGalore.com makes it easy to get the high-quality designer blinds and shades you've always wanted in your home, all at up to 45% off. See for yourself at BlindsGalore.com today. Let them know Nancy Grace sent you. Choose Nancy Grace at the checkout drop-down menu. That's BlindsGalore.com. Thanks, Blinds Galore. Crime Stories with Nancy Grace. Guys, we are talking about the disappearance of a really stunning young mom who seemingly went out bike riding on her own, all alone, on Mother's Day. Her children, her two girls, were out on a camping trip. They called her. Mom didn't answer. The husband says he was at a firefighting seminar In Colorado, which uh, I'll have to look it up, but I think is 80, 90 miles away. And he had to spend the night in a hotel. Uh Uh-uh, I would have been all up in that. But that aside, she was all alone. The bike at the bottom of a hill. We're hearing that right now from Tyson Draper, who, according to him, secretly recorded Barry Morphew. And I want to make a point. Colorado is a one-party consent state. Only one person in the conversation has to agree to the taping. Before I go to Tyson Draper, let's hear some more of that, Jackie. Let's hear cut 25. What seems to have happened from the investigators, and they don't give much and I've got private people working for me, is maybe she was abducted right here. And they found an article going west of hers. They won't tell us what it is. So they sent another team after they found the article that covered this hillside all the way down to the river pretty good. My concerns were this way that way if it was the cat 
because the cats, they drag their prey up the mountain and out of people's. We can't find sign for the cat, but we got rain like right yeah. away. Yeah. Could have washed away sign. Okay, to you. Tyson Draper joining me, the Draper Brothers YouTube channel, who secretly recorded Suzanne Morphew's husband. I need to understand this terrain, because if someone, as the husband is saying, kidnapped her, see, in my mind, Tyson, she was out on a secluded trail. Mm -hmm. So if someone kidnapped her, they would have to either know that she was about to come down that hill and be in, lying in wait, or they would have to happen to be there and suddenly say, hey, there's a woman on a bike. I will steal her and take her with a no trace. What, what is the area? Um, the area is very mountainous. Um, it's, it's very secluded. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a mountain biking trailhead. And so there's people that park, you know, up above on the, on the 50, uh, where the 225 and the 50 come together. Um, but I imagine on that particular day, it being Mother's Day and all, uh, there probably wasn't a whole lot of people out there. Um, and, you know, the size of, of Maysville is, is pretty eye-opening, too, when people, when people look into that. It's, it's 135 people is the population there, so it's not like a highly populated area. I just think that, that the whole abduction theory is just, the, the odds of that happening are astronomical. Tyson Draper, he also mentioned that a car cut her off. And I'm trying to imagine a mountain trail with a road in, a me in the middle of it with a car. Is there a way a car could have cut her off without seeing it? I can't visualize how that could happen on a trail. Okay, so I was there and actually made a video. Um, I attached my camera on the front of my truck and, and kind of drove the same area that she would have ridden her bike on. Brilliant. And it it was pretty eye-opening, Nancy, um, how short the bike ride was, number one, from, from her house on Puma Path to the spot where they found the bicycle. I kept my truck at about 10 miles an hour uh, simulating a bicycle ride. And it took me about, I think it was about three minutes to get from point A to point B. So it was a very short bike ride. Now, when you get to the spot where her bicycle was discovered, you're going to find that it's very interesting for, for several reasons. Number one, it, you come around a hairpin turn. There's a hairpin turn right there, and that's the first spot on that road before you get up to the 50 uh, where there's no security camera signs, number one. There's security camera signs all up and down that road, you know, no trespassing, you're on sur surveillance, et cetera. But as you come around that corner, there's no view from security cameras. That's number one. Number two, there's no way she drove off of there with a car running her off the road. And here's why. Because as you come around that corner, again, it, it's such a steep incline. And any car that's coming around a hairpin and turn, you got to think that they're not flying around that corner like 50 miles an hour. They're coming around at about five miles an hour. So they're going to see somebody on a bicycle, and they're going to have they're going to have plenty of time to stop. Um, it's just not a spot that's feasible to get run off the road. I mean, you know, Suzanne driving a bicycle up a hill, she's going to have a tremendous amount of control to put her feet down to stop before she rolls off that steep embankment. I'm there. trying to digest what you're saying. So is this trail used by vehicles? It is. It's a road. It's, it's actually, uh, it's the 225. And I'm not going to pretend to be an expert on, on how the, you know, the, Col the Colorado trail and the bike, the bike trail and all that intersects with this. But that, that actual road is a county road. Okay. Is it dirt or paved? It's a two lane. Is this her, mm -hmm. you know, Lauren Scharf, was this her regular bike ride? That's where she always went? I, I wanted to know that question too, Nancy, but the sheriff's office won't tell us. And Barry Morphy didn't tell me either on the phone. I got another question about the bike. Uh, Lauren Scharf or Tyson Draper, do you know if when the bike was found, was it laying on the ground? Was it damaged? Uh, was it up on a kickstand, if it has a kickstand? Was it leaning against a tree? How was it found? Do either of you know that? Tyson Draper, do you know? 
Well, I can only tell you what I was told by Barry's own mouth, and um, and he actually cut cut it short as he was explaining it in my video. He talked about how the bike was found down against a tree at the bottom of this canyon, and the wheel was upside down, or the wheel was bent, or something to that nature. And then he he quickly shifted gears and went in another direction after he realized he probably shouldn't know that information or I don't know. I don't know what the situation was, but he changed gears. there. Okay. So. Let's talk about what you just said, because in my mm-hmm. mind, that's a critical piece of information. Um, Cheryl McCollum, director of cold case research Institute and forensic expert, Cheryl, that's the first time we have heard anything about the condition of the bike. That's major that the bike's at the bottom of a hill against a tree with one tire up and part of it bent. What does that tell you? It tells me if she was run off the road or hit by a car, her body would have been right there with a bike. It again seems very staged to me. If you've got a dirt road where she had a major wreck, there would be dirt and dust under the seat of the bike. Uh, There would be dirt and dust inside the spokes under the wheel realm. They would know that. If there's no blood, that's going to be critical. So again, the bike could have been thrown there, ditched there by somebody. Her body would not have been more than five or ten feet from that bicycle. I'm trying to figure out exactly. L- let me understand something, Tyson Draper. You're saying that it, this is the spot where there's no video surveillance. Is there video surveillance up to that spot? Yes. Uh, the day that Lauren Sharp and I actually went out there one day and we were, we were making it a point to look for security cameras and we were looking up in the trees and we were looking, you know, anywhere that we could see it. And, and so when we saw a uh, security camera sign, we would stop and we would kind of investigate. And there's one that's probably about 50 yards from where the bike was discovered, but it's, you can't see it because you come around this hairpin turn on that bridge. There's a little bridge there and you come around. And so it's just the first area where somebody would dump a bike that is just outside of security surveillance. Crime Stories with Nancy Grace. Guys, we're talking about the disappearance of Suzanne Morphew and we're learning in a bombshell reveal from the husband more information. So uh, was there video surveillance to either Lauren Scharf or Tyson Draper of her going on a bike ride at all that day? Lauren? Nancy, no one has said that or saw that she was on a bike ride and that we have not seen any surveillance video. So Tyson Draper, how can that be? If this is surveilled by, let me just say, home security cameras that catch people going by on the road. Let's just go with that as a surveillance video. You're saying that this turn where a bike was found was the first spot where there was no video surveillance. So that means there should have been video surveillance of her going on the bike ride, right? Well, that's exactly what I I questioned the first time I went out there. I've been out there a couple of different times now, Nancy, but the first time I was there, it was three weeks after Mother's Day. And uh, so it wasn't it wasn't that long. There, a lot of time hadn't gone by. And so I was wondering about the, the security cameras that were up by the Morpheus home because they had blocked off. I don't know if it was Barry or the CBI or who had blocked off Puma Path with barricades and they wouldn't let you through there to Barry's house. And so there was a back way that went, um, that somebody just made with a tractor or whatever. And right there by this homemade road, there was, there was a sign that said, do not enter, you know, security surveillance, this and that. And everything that I've been able to uncover so far about the Morpheus video surveillance is that they had it on the house. They have it on the property, but it was off or down or, or something that day on mother's day. That day only Tyson that's what I was told and, and I can't I can't verify that 100% but I have talked to people that were very close to the situation and they said that they were wondering what happened to the footage and they said that the cameras were down that day for whatever reason to Lauren Sharp has his location the husband's I don't know conference or seminar 
in Colorado? Has that ever been confirmed? And what was the seminar, Lauren Scharf? So the fire chief with the Chafee County told me there wasn't any uh, training of any sorts in Denver. And so that was kind of ruled out pretty early on in the investigation. But Barry told me he was actually at a job site for his lawn care company or his construction company. Um, and I asked him if there was anyone with him. And he said, no, they were coming the day afterwards. So, okay, wait a minute, uh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. So the whole thing about going to a uh, continuing education for volunteer firefighters, that's no longer the alibi? No. Mm-mm. Okay. All right. Learning something new. So now it's he went to Denver for a job site. Yes. Okay. Yep. Why did he have to go on Mother's Day? Good question. Why did he um, have to spend the night? I- Good question. Okay, Um, I want to point out, and Troy Slayton, you can back me up on this. This guy, Barry Morphew, the husband, he's not a suspect. He's not been named a person of interest. I'm looking at him because statistically, you always look at lover, boyfriend, husband, ex. Always. That's where you start because statistically, they're more likely to have a reason or a desire to get rid of a spouse. That doesn't mean Barry Morphew had anything to do with this. That's true. But you don't have to be named publicly a suspect. You don't have to be named publicly a person of interest, but he absolutely is. You know, Nancy, and uh, Cheryl McCollum, the forensic expert, knows that they are looking at everything forensically relating to him. And you can understand why he's so suspicious of the investigators in this case because his friend was there when they were discovering the bike, and he feels that the law enforcement, that the sheriff's department completely botched the investigation by obliterating some of the evidence. Let's talk about what Barry Morphew is saying. As Troy Slayton is accurately pointing out, no, he hasn't been named a suspect, but he probably feels like a suspect because, of course, cops are looking at him because that's SOP, Standard Operating Procedure. Here's, Here's the reality. Let's say somebody kidnapped her. How lucky is that person that the day they choose to kidnap this woman is Mother's Day and her two adult children aren't there and her husband, as loving as he is, is not there and the cameras where she chooses to go ride are not working and he is the husband's not calling her not saying hey honey what do you want to do on Mother's Day I'm coming home as quick as I can no he first says he's at a training then he changes that he's not at a a firefighter training in Denver he's at a job site so he's changing it so for somebody that knows law enforcement is probably going to be looking at him he has done everything to make himself more and more suspicious. He can take a private polygraph. He can say, hey, you know what? Come, you don't even have to get a warrant. Come look at my house. Take my truck, take my Bobcat. I did not hurt her. He hasn't done that here. He's saying police have botched it. They've obliterated stuff. A cat drug her up a hill. He's told us everything that makes him look more and more suspicious. Dan Ribikoff, polygraph expert, author of I Spy, How to Be Your Own Investigator at danribikoff.com. Dan, how hard is it to get a private poly? I bet you'd do one. Sure. Oh, absolutely. I'd be glad to polygraph him. Uh, Very easy to get a polygraph. He may have taken a polygraph test with his attorney. The results may not have been uh, what they wanted them to be. He may have uh, failed or he may have gotten an inconclusive, and they may not turn that over because that would be privileged with his attorney. But, um, you know, what, uh, what's being said here um, leads me to say that a person who is innocent would generally be very cooperative. Um, here you have blame shift. He's blaming the police for botching it. He's blaming an animal for kidnapping his wife. And um, in credibility assessment, we say if it doesn't make sense, it's generally not true. And that's what's adding up here. Um, what, what Barry is doing is uh, certainly making him a suspect. What is a critical analysis test, Dan Rebikoff? Critical analysis test um, can have several meanings. Uh, it depends on what the, the agency is utilizing. But um, usually it would be a uh, forensic type of interview 
where uh, they would conduct a structured interview with the subject and score it like a polygraph. We use a method called FAINT, which is Forensic Assessment Interview Test, where I would interview you, um, ask you questions, and then score it plus, minus, plus one, plus two, zero. And uh, that's almost like a polygraph with my eyes and ears. Tyson Draper, the Draper Brothers YouTube channel, I understand that your recorder interaction with the husband, Barry Morphew, uh, during that Morphew noticed that you were recording him with a GoPro and asked him to ask you to stop. Why did he not want to be recorded? Well, that's the million dollar question right there. That's the one that I can't, I cannot answer, Nancy. I, um, he, he did mention that he, he said, would you mind turning that off? Because we we've, we've been troubled and we've been bothered by the media and we don't want we don't want any media whatsoever. And so that was that was coming from right directly from Barry. Tyson Draper, any evidence he's got a girlfriend? Um, that I don't know. I, I've just heard rumors um, and, and I don't I, I don't know. I, I I would not be the best person to ask on that. What about one Lauren Sharp? Does he have a girlfriend? Nancy, he told me he's never dated anyone else besides. Suzanne, you know, and they've been together for 32 years. I still don't know why he had to have a hotel room on uh, Mother's Day to to look at a job site. It's is it an hour and a half away to Denver from there, Lauren? No, it's more it's more like uh, close to three hours. Away. Three hours, same, you know, six one half dozen the other. I would still get home for for Father's Day. You darn right. I mean, I, but that that's me. Maybe it was okay with them. Maybe they were going to get together that night and celebrate. Maybe there's a lot of reasons he wasn't there during the day. One last question to Tyson Draper. Again, explain to me his demeanor. And if you could tell me, um, are mountain lions prevalent in the area? Um, well, his demeanor was, uh, I said it the night, the night after it happened. Uh, I said it and I'll say it forever. He was very nervous. And there was a, there was a lot of, red flags there was just things that weren't sitting right with me um you know I, and that's that's where i'm at with it now there, there's a lot of red flags you can go back and watch the video and pick it apart um but his demeanor was very nervous uh like he was hiding something and um if you look at her brother andy mormon he's coming out and he's saying i don't care about anything else other than finding my little sister and that's, in my opinion, that's the way Barry should be acting. Like, no matter what it takes, I, let's just find Suzanne. I don't care if media is here. I don't care about X, Y, and Z. Let's just find my wife. And I just don't see that same attitude with Barry that I do with her brother. I'm going to go through and watch the entire Draper Brothers YouTube channel video of Morphew. But yes. uh, you said that there were red flags. Yes. Please do. Please go and, watch that. And, and let me encouraged. ask you one more question, Tyson Draper. <clears throat> uh-huh. When did the story change that he was first at a seminar and then that changed to a construction site with nobody else around? When did that happen? Well, okay, so the day I was there was three weeks after um, Mother's Day, and he told me that day that he was up there preparing a job site, um, that he was getting his workers all put together. Um, there was something that they had that went wrong with a job and they were up there to fix it. He doesn't normally work on Sundays, especially on Mother's Day, but this was a special case where they had to go fix this job or something. And so I know that his he was saying his narrative even then was that he had a job site. I didn't know anything about a firefighter training, to be honest with you. I heard about it, but I didn't. I don't know where that. Okay, came from. you know maybe so. the whole alibi is lost in the sauce. But he's been sticking to this story since at least week three, guys. The tip line seven one nine three one two seven five three zero. Please help find Suzanne Morphew. Nancy Grace Crime Story signing off. Goodbye, friend. Mm-hmm.